Hello guys, welcome to another day of the Voice G8 podcast and I have here with me Richard Kobiwole. Richard, what's up? I'm good, my brother. How are you doing, my brother? I'm also doing good. And on today's episode, we are discussing the future of the African youth. What the future holds for we, the African youth, for we, the upcoming, for we, the ones who are come to take up the role of our predecessors. So Richard, um, in terms of um, the youth, uh, the, the generations, which generation are you actually in? Um, I, I believe I'm a millennial, but it's like the writings that keep coming keeps telling me I'm a Gen Z. I don't get it. Ah, why? I'm not a Gen Z. So I don't <laughs> get the whole conversation. So, I know for a fact what I knew was the Gen Z's have been start from the late 90s, so maybe 99 or 2000. Yeah. That was 2000 makes it 10 years. 2010 is 10 yeah, years. Yeah, 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 yeah. But when you Google it, they tell you that if you are in 97, you are part of the the Gen Z. I don't get it because when you look through, some are telling you it's a millennial, some are telling you you are a Gen Z. When you Google, it gives you varieties, different varieties. Okay, then I think looking at the um, description of the millennial generation, I actually fall under the millennial generation. And I think um, the millennial generation are the upcoming ones, the ones who are coming to take up the role of our predecessors. We are the um, the, the but, next in line. But per research, as I now, we have five different generations that are out at the moment. So okay. They have the baby bombers who are the 1946 to 1964. Mm-hmm. And there's the Gen X, yeah. which is 1965 to 1980. Mm-hmm. And there are the millennials who are 1981 to 1996. Okay. And there are the Gen Zs who are roughly between the 90s and early 2010s. Mm-hmm. So I don't know how whoever came together with this whole thing and made the well, because it's not it's not adding up. Why is it not adding so, up? So if you are telling me the Gen Z start from um ninety nine mm-hmm. or probably the early nineties, listen, the Gen Z start from the mid nineties mm-hmm. to early two thousand and ten. But we know this whole generation thing is a, a decade, a decade, a yeah. decade. So how do they fall in that decade? Well, I think that is um a story for another day. Yeah, it's, it's to, a long story. Sometimes. For us to answer. So, but let's just move on. So. I think um I think we the youth in Africa looking at um the whole situation as at now, I think um we are um, I think we are being more enlightened um, with the advent of this um technology and all that we are seeing the world more better through our screens, even though um things might be happening somewhere like um ten thousand kilometers away. We in Ghana here, we can know what's happening around the world, what's going on and all that. So um, with that, I think um, we've been enlightened past our predecessors, people who came before us. Because in terms of um, so many, um, in terms of so many um, um, world issues, um, world politics. We have the act, world at our fingertips. Yeah, so we are more enlightened. We know more about um, what the future is about. And even people are choosing more, like are venturing to different career paths in terms of the technology in terms of the it and all that so um with that we are moving forward we are we are we are we are being and um, we are getting there as people but looking at um where we fridge as 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 the youth looking at how looking at the things we know now looking at how we've been enlightened looking at at the path that we are going now what what do you think the future holds for many African youths um, in terms of um, in terms of penetrating into the world market, being world leaders, being the best, the biggest CEOs and all that? What do you think the future holds for us, the African youth? Okay, so as African youth, we have five major things we need to look out. All right, look at before we think about development. Mm-hmm. And the first thing is our education. Yeah. Then the second is to, to look at our policies, mm-hmm. which is, you know, the policies that the government or whoever is governing the country mm-hmm. looks at. And then you look at social media, mm-hmm. which is a very important tool at this point. And then you look at the interest of the majority of the youth as at now, okay. things that they find interesting. Right. And finally, you you would have to know the general opinion of people, probably when there are sensors that go out, mm-hmm. statistics, and you get to know the things people love. Yeah, And that's how you know the development of the the youth now mm-hmm. if you're looking at education now let's take a clear look at our educational system you know speaking of the education system our education system was is much of the colonial education system what the whites brought to us yes. and that is what 
has been um, we've been learning for the past 60 years or 70 years or whatever it has to be for the past 70 years or 60 years this is the education system that we are on this is what we've been learning and how have we progressed how have we improved upon our lives so with that i think uh, so this is what our predecessors have learned this is what we have, have been learning that it has not, not enabled most africans to penetrate into the into the world global markets and world leadership and even if you are talking of the world global markets and leader and the, and 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 the, and the leadership the ceos and all that maybe out of 100 people out of 100 um, but global leaders, who go on that platform so. yeah out of um uh, uh, like 100 you get about five or ten africans five or you know let's make it africans we are, we, are, we are not putting in that much just because our education system hasn't been able to you know able, able to able to prepare us for this level okay it's, so one thing i one thing i've noticed and that's my own observation mm. now when we we are still slaves mm -hmm. in our own country with that mentality mm -hmm. now when we do the national science and math quiz that's mm -hmm. the highest of those things that they do when they are done the students who win what happens to them we get to year oh they were flew to go and school in the united states this book where you know here from the beginning yeah what impact do they bring back into the country when they go it's a question we should be asking ourselves what impact do they bring whenever they are outside our country when they go the colonial masters who are our bosses at this point have a way of indoctrinating them into their system yeah. so when they are done probably they know how to create nuclear bombs they stay they don't come back to ghana here. Mm -hmm. they don't care about those things so I'm, i mean we should actually make people love the country one mm -hmm. So when these people are here and they're able to reach that level, we say, oh, um, our best um, medicine student who could have stayed in this country and become a very good doctor who would save a lot of people would have to fly outside the country mm -hmm. because the system is, is against the person. So you understand what I mean? Yeah. Our main front, those who would actually be game changers for us, mm -hmm. are taken out. Are taken out. And they're happy whenever they are being sent. Mm -hmm. Even me crime it here, for me, I'll be very happy. It's mm -hmm. the same thing. Yeah. You understand? So whenever these things come, we are still slaves. I remember a rapper once said, We we are slaves, though we are not in chains, but we are still slaves. We don't know. That is why if today if, if they bring an aircraft here that oh you push go and be slaves out there, you see the number of people who fill it up. It, it's telling you the understanding of the youth at this point. Mm -hmm. Things they understand. Let me bottle it down to Ghana at this point now at Ghana at this point in the last four three or four years we've seen how our nurses have left the country yeah we've seen how teachers teachers have left we've seen how probably common civil servant those who are bankers and the rest tell you they are going to school in Canada some tell you are going to nurse in UK it tells you something about the youth Mm -hmm. we because of the influx of social media or how social media is affecting or having a toll on us someone sits home picks his phone probably take talking and he finds out oh that's my mate that i was friends with he's currently in canada and if he tells you the amount of money he's making per hour oh then i need to also fly mm -hmm. that person if that person was empowered in this country could have been a very good resource for the country at this point mm -hmm. but because we fail that's what i'm saying those before us fail to educate us and let us understand because as at the time i was in primary or probably uh, kg they are telling me about london bridge mm. they're educating me about london bridge but as at that point they should let me know that oh when you go to Manchester palace they have this and that that should be the core thing when you tell me about oh Nzulezu, you know when you get to Nzulezu, it's a city on its own, but there is always highlight on London Bridge. London Bridge is for Linda. Yeah. Every child has it in his head. Yeah, I, I so they want to go and see. Yeah, I think actually it is more of painting our culture very black to us. You know, they made us to understand that our culture. Is but not, now you have the much. chance to change it. What is stopping you from changing? No, it? I'm saying that they, um, you know, they made us to understand that our culture is, is not the best. They made us to understand that whatever we are practicing, everything about us is inferior. And that has put at the back of our mind the inferiority complex. So everything yeah. about us, everything that we see, 
we think is not the best and also it is funny that you know the uh those who taught us the, the teachers our leaders are the ones who have this heavy mentality yeah. of influence oh. complex they are the leaders of it they are, are the ones very who have it heavily at the back of their very mind true. because they are the ones who have been who has who had a chance to change all these things and they never change and they never change anything even look look when they go to parliament mm -hmm. and i don't know as i know i heard they, they are changing some things at a point they said because some people can't speak english they can't speak at parliament what kind of colonial mentality is that and even it affects and us even, and even talking of parliament you know um, i did my national service at the parliament i was saying mm -hmm. as we we in ghana and as Ghanaians and africans as we are at the parliament house we were told never to wear anything african me doing my national service there i should what i have to wear is suits you get for, it. for monday to friday i should be wearing suits i shouldn't wear anything african so mm -hmm. these things is the core it has started from the core mm -hmm. the core is what the issue is the core is you know when okay uh they've told us this is bad this is bad so we we are just lost in our own country yeah we are just lives in our own country we don't know what's going on in our country we just sit back and we feel like oh eh, they say i share suits in marriage my every day but as an african probably you can have an african prince a nice african prince is showcasing your culture but we are not able to do it because they made us understand from the start that you should wear white suit. That's what you look executive. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the word on it, executive. Mm -hmm. So we feel if you are wearing a normal African way, oh, wait, there's a local boy. We'll be sure if you go away there. And it's just a few years ago when I remember President Kufo initiated the Friday wear. Mm, the African way. That's what people started showcasing the African. But, but, but even how how can we? I know also I think the match is the Ghana man. But how can we be in Ghana, and and we we've dedicated one month to be a Ghana man? And even the how do people celebrate it? Yeah, well, it doesn't make any sense. How do people celebrate the Ghana man? It's, <laughs> it's a full conversation. It was. Yeah, so, so if you are looking at the youth mm -hmm. and all the things we've highlighted, it tells you the youth going up. There are things they've seen, mm -hmm. things they don't want to find themselves in mm -hmm. that is why the youth would want to leave the country mm -hmm. instead of staying and bettering the country they are leaving because they don't want to leave and probably go and be like some old man they knew in their area that oh yeah oh yeah buy you my mm -hmm. or time and shana bravo but i don't feel quite good tree when the you understand all these things mm -hmm. and you are human no matter who you are you start running a lot, start calculating a lot of things in your life. Everyone's lo everyone loves luxury. So, so um, according to stats, like the information that we've had, um, in nine months, six thousand nurses have left the country. Even, but that is that is um a different sector of the of, of, of the country of the country. So imagine the general population. And we have teachers who are also leaving, mm. and teachers too. I think we have over thousand or two thousand that has that have left in that same month and let's look at the general populace every time when you wake up you check on your phone someone is playing the country someone you knew someone you were eating with right here the, right now the next day you see friend. yeah you see the person ah, <laughs> nah, and, <laughs> and the person you know people are living like so it seems like um the future that our leaders have to build for the african youth the future that and um, they were to make it brighter for us all turn into shambles there's no there's no future for the african youth and that is what let, let's let's Alex, just imagine uh, listen imagine in, even only 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 in ghana it's like and nobody sees the african future mm -hmm. and even see, other african countries even ghana even ghana if you go to nigeria it's crazy yeah see one thing one thing is for sure yeah people living in the country are not happy because of their conditions mm -hmm. one how can you tell me in this day and age people still work and they are being paid 400 cents 500 ghana mm -hmm. how do those people survive yeah there is no survivor so it, obviously it could also end up mm, of course so the best the person would want to do or think about is to leave the country find somewhere he or she would find comfort and i know nowhere is heaven Mm -hmm. but sometimes when you listen to the conversations that happen at different places and you marry it with where you are the best option is you just you just have to move that's what they call jackpot you just have to jackpot and 
mind their own business. And I feel now let's look at those who are living in the country. Yeah. What is their condition? Yeah. That's what you should be asking yourself because their condition is what compels them to leave. To leave, yeah, of course. And those who don't have the chance to leave to turn out to be criminals mm -hmm. because the system is forcing them to. Yeah. So it, like it doesn't even matter whatever you're doing, whether you are working mm -hmm. or you are not working, you are a criminal. Mm -hmm. So one way or the other, because if you go to every department in the country, wherever Everywhere. that you find yourself, there is corruption. Everywhere. Whether whether you go to the if government it's at the side, passport office, uh, yeah. if it's at the DVLA, uh, if it's at a lunch commission, any normal office you get to, somebody wants to take something small for the boys. Somebody wants to get it. Yeah, of course. You, you understand what I mean? Everybody has that personal feel. I, I want to put the word, the words right. Everyone is trying to be selfish mm -hmm. because what we have is very little. Yeah. And a few people are benefiting. So when you get the slightest chance of enjoying from what people are benefiting, we are all fighting like crabs in a in a bucket. Of course, we all want survival. It is all these things. It is because of how people are being treated, and how things are working. The last time I had to check the minimum wage, if you remember the minimum wage, I, I, they had to update it, and I was like, this amount. How can you tell me someone is making that amount? I would have to check. I'm no, not sure. I, I'm not. I'm not sure the minimum wage. It doesn't even work. work. It doesn't work because even if let's assume the min the minimum wage is fifteen CDs, is it, uh, in Ghana do they calculate it based on hours or day? I think it's a day. They don't do hours. You see where the problem is. So you see where it all starts from. Mm -hmm. Now, if you're a youth and you look at all these things, you lose focus. Mm -hmm. In Africa, you sit down and you're like, so why? What's going on? Where did we go wrong? And it's not like we. <laughs> The fact, it's not like the jobs are even there. Yeah. The hustle for a job is real. Mm -hmm. The hustle to get something to do day in day. I tell yourself, oh, I'm going to an office. I'm. It is real because there, there is a story that you don't know any big man up there. How do you get there? Being, um, being in the job market, I've seen that there are vacancies, there are shoes that they are looking for people to fill. But the only problem there is... Um, the youth are not skilled enough. So most of them are not qualified for these jobs. jobs. So I think what is the right way, what is the right um, path to take for to us to, you know, um, train our youth from the beginning for them to be skilled so that when they grow up, they will be able to be taking up these roles easily. I think, again, one is empowering or empowering the youth from that age, mm -hmm. discovering what your child has passion for what your child likes mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. it tells you he or she has interest in knowing what makes the machine move so if you're empowering that child the child knows that oh obviously now we know maybe tti mm -hmm. we know any technical institute they don't need to go and send the person to a senior high school to go and waste his or her own time there mm -hmm. That's the issue here because you son mommy be able to be a doctor and be a lawyer. Mm, everybody, everybody wants their, yes. their son to be a white like, colored job. A, a white colored job, which, which doesn't make any, it doesn't any, make any, any, sense. any better sense. Because, so you see, yeah. it takes us back to the colonial masters and what they did. Mm -hmm. We fail to understand. So now that the millennials are enlightened, they would want to throw more light on the Gen Zs. It is time where the millennials who are currently parents need to adapt. Mm -hmm. In educating your kids about technical, yeah, knowing technical that stuff. oh, uh, your son loves IT. Oh, you're in school now. You don't need to send your son to an SHS. Up at IPMCB the now call. He or she starts the training from there. From there, certificate to be you know, if you were now call um a, a technical university or a university that's actually modernized that he has a degree on it. So at the end of the day, it's not just he having the skill, but he has a certificate to show for what he's doing. That one, when the job market is open, he or she finds a way to fit into it. Mm -hmm. That is what we should be doing. Empowering them to do it. So, now it's it's come back to our education system of us, you know, making a few changes in the education system by, you know, making... Um, I think now the government is bringing... is, is now initiating this 
um, T vet schools yes, and all that. The um, is, is uh, this term, this term school, um, science, technology, engineering, yeah. and mathematics schools, and all that for them to for them to you know equip themselves in this field. The government is actually um, putting in the in in, a, in a, it's actually on the right path with the initiative that they are on to educate the, the kids on these things. But um, I think also many of them should be encouraged to also be that's to point. follow their passion encouraging is the issue growing up my and, mom wanted yeah, me to be a lawyer yeah so i had law at the back of my head but after CTS, i feel things change now i have a cultivate educating mm. tv and film production mm -hmm. it took me from a different level to another level yeah because you find that i'm growing up though you like talking but that's not your job mm. your job is not to defend people your job is to actually direct something different mm -hmm. that's the direction of your life so as parents, what they are supposed to be doing with us is getting to know your child's wants. Obu mm. never know that he or she is supposed to be one of the greatest artists in the world. Mm. But just because you beat the child, you've limited he or she. Now that parents are hearing that, oh, so Obu every week you'll turn 10,000 pounds. Now they understand football. But I remember back in the days, those who watched the Abedi Pele's days and those people, a lot of friends didn't want their kids to be footballers. Because they say oh, football, football, they want to school and all of that. Musicians the same. But now, because the narrative is changing, yeah, I feel it, it would grow to a point where people would understand. Home care is important. Parents need to play a major role. Because in the end, there, when you go to some homes, some parents don't even speak fancy with their children. They don't yeah. speak the local dialect. And the funny part... But football off be one one and came. Are you coming here? Uh, and also, and also, you know, one thing that we um we Africans should understand is that when someone is deprived of his culture, knowing his culture, that person will be deprived All of his of his identity as well. Oh, his life. Yeah, because your culture is also direct you to the path of knowing yourself your culture is knowing your roots, you knowing who you are and all that. But if we are trying to educate our our, our children based on someone's culture based on uh, the, the the european or the american culture teaching them right from birth from english you know the food that they even eat is more of the fast food the, those chain see, food joints and all that and making them feel like the local food that we have which is even more the healthier the healthier and the, and the and the best ones that even those even the um the foreigners when they come they tourists around, enjoy. when they come they enjoy it but they've made it seem as if or everything we have is so bad. I know some families that even when you get home, they don't watch Kumawu movies. Mm -hmm. All they watch is foreign movies. They're doing. But again, if they could watch the Kumawu movie, they get to understand their culture, mm -hmm. things of their people. Yeah. I've never, I've never lived in Kumasi for maybe a week. Yeah, even, but I can speak Chi because of the language. Uh, even it's not by force even for Kumawu movies. But no, I'm just giving an yeah, example. You show any Ghanaian movie, things. Ghanaian, it's African, Ghanaian. or African movie. But you go there, watch only the telenovelas. Yeah, all that. You know, know everything, so you everything is everything has changed. So that's the system we The system needs an overhauling. That yeah, we need. a reorientation for yes. and also it's it's. Or writing people and it's basically boils down to the to the to, uh, to the mothers the mothers have to do all this work home training yeah they are the ones who are normally with the kids they are the ones who major, major, most of the time raise the kids and they are the ones who have to be doing all these and, things and looking at this and looking at how the generation is how they would go now the gen z's are the ones who are going to take over mm. and looking at how things are going i for my side if care is not taken, there will be no change. Mm, yeah. Because let me use our presence as an example. Our president's uncle was a head of state. Mm -hmm. His dad also became a head of state. He has seen all this there is to see when it comes to governance in our part of the world. Mm -hmm. So when you are talking about governance, we're well, who yeah. But when he became president, we are seeing people who are actually messing up in his administration. Yeah. It tells you there was something they saw when they were kids. Mm -hmm. you, you understand what I mean? Back then, in Kumamo time, now they had executives who were spending money. Mm -hmm. Remember the last time I turned on a newspaper and they were fighting over, was it tissues or toilet papers or something like that? In Parliament, it tells you the kind of things that were happening back then. Mm -hmm. And it is reflecting today. Yeah. Today, the same thing is reflecting where our politicians are spending money on things that are not important. So if care is not taken, and the orientation is not done right. The kids are watching you, leaders. The kids are watching. When you are you are 
off for pension and you expect the person to be paying your pension pay is no pain remember what you did today is going to apply okay so there you have it this was um, a brief discussion on um, the future for African youth what the future holds for us and um, in terms of penetrating into the global market becoming global leaders and all that what is there to be done by the home units by the government and by ourselves as the youth so i hope you really enjoyed um, this conversation and don't forget to subscribe to the channel like the video and share it as well see you next time peace